All right, it's finally time to get started with some code. And our first video is about useState. Let's understand with an example the rendering behavior in React when we are dealing with the useState hook. Now, first thing I have to mention is that I have created a new React project using Create React App. So go ahead and run the command npx create React App followed by your project name. I have named the project as React Render Demo. Once your project is created, in the source folder, create a new folder called Components. This folder will contain all the code we are going to write during this series. Since this video's focus is on the use state hook, within the Components folder, I'm going to create another folder called use state. U and S in uppercase. Within this folder, I'm going to create a new file called useState.js. Again, U and S uppercase. Within this file, I'm going to use the snippet RAFC to create a function component. Alright, that was a bit of work, but we finally have a component to understand the rendering behavior with useState. For this example, we are going to create a simple counter. So import useState at the top and within the component, create a count state variable and the setter function. So count, set count and the initial value is zero. For the JSX, I'm going to add a button that increments the count value. Button, the inner text is going to be the count value. And on click, we increment the count value by calling set count, where we take the previous count and increment it by one. And that is pretty much our component. And what we are really interested in is the rendering of this component. So I'm going to add a log statement, use state render to identify when this component is rendering or re-rendering. Let me quickly format it. And quickly in the comments, if you can leave an opinion as to whether this is the font size or this is the font size you would prefer. I changed my monitor and I can't remember the settings anymore. So just let me know in the comment section and I'll stick to it. And once we have this use state component ready, let's include it in app.js and test it out. So open app.js, include use state, make sure to import it at the top, and then let's head to the browser. On page load, if we take a look at the console, we can see two log statements. If we check our component though, we just have the one log statement. But the statement was logged twice. Now this can be really confusing at first, but this is because of the strict mode encouraged by Create React App. If you take a look at index.js, you can see that our app component is wrapped with react.strict mode. What this wrapper does is intentionally double invoke the function component body only in development mode. If you deploy to production, however, you would see the log statement only once as intended. Now, if you want to understand why the strict mode double invokes or just want to learn more about strict mode in general, I would advise you to go through the React docs. For now, the fix is to simply comment out this wrapper component. If we now take a look at the browser, we see the log statement only once, which is what we would expect from the initial render. Now let's focus on the role of use state. After the initial render, one of the ways to flag a component for re-render is by calling the setter function from useState. In our component, we are calling setCount 
on click of the button. If you go back to the browser, clear the console and click on the button, you can see that use state render is logged in the console. With every subsequent click, the set count function will flag or queue a re-render of our component and the message is logged in the console every time. This is probably one of the more common things that we learn when using the use state hook. Let's understand this re-rendering behavior with respect to the render and commit phases. We begin with the component tree. We have the app component and the use state component. When we click on the button in the use state component, the state hooks setter function is called, which flags the use state component as needing an update. During the render phase, React will first go through the component tree and identify the flagged components. It says that use state is the only component that needs an update. React then uses the create element method to convert the component's JSX into a React element. It will then diff the element produced from the previous render to the new render. It will identify the changes and hand them over to the commit phase where the changes are applied to the DOM. This is what happens when you use the state hook in a React component. Now what is a special case with use state and re-rendering is that if you update a state hook to the same value as the current state, React may render that component one more time and then bail out from subsequent renders. Let's try to understand what I mean by that with an example. In the component's JSX, I'm going to add two more buttons. First button will simply set the count value to zero. So count to zero on click, set count zero. And the other button is going to set the count value to five. So set count five, count to five. Let's now head to the browser and see what happens. On page load, we have the one log message from the initial render. If I click on the first button, the component re-renders and we already know about this. However, if I reload, clear the console and click on the second button, which is count to zero, the component does not re-render and I can click on it as many times as I want to. So after the initial render, if you call a setter function, but set the state to the same value, the component will not re-render. Next, let's talk about the count to five button. I'm going to reload the page and this time, I'm going to click on the first button five times, which logs the render message five times. So one, two, three, four, five. You can see the message has been logged five times. Now I'm going to clear the console and click on the count to five button. You can see that the component renders one more time. However, if I click on the same button again, as many times as I want to, the component does not re-render. Let me clear the console, click it again. The component does not re-render. If I increment it by one though, and then click count to five again, it will re-render as the state value changes again. So after a component has been re-rendered, if you set the state variable to the same value, the component will re-render, but only one more time. Let's quickly revisit our render phase and understand what happens. We begin with the component tree. We have the app component and the use state component. When we click on the button in the use state component, the state hooks setter function is called, which flags the use state component as needing an update. React will go through the component tree and identify the flagged components. 
it sees that the useState component is flagged. However, there is a catch. React requires that useState updates must pass in or return a new reference as the state value. If the state is a primitive type, it has to be a new string or number or boolean. If it is not the case, React will simply bail out from the render phase for that component. The bailing out part though has two cases. If only the initial render is completed and the value passed into the setter function is the same as before, the render phase bails out from proceeding further. However, if the component has been re-rendered already, then the component will proceed with the render phase one more time. And Dan Abramov mentions this as a safety net that is required as React won't actually know if it's safe to bail out in all cases until it renders again. So the render phase proceeds and generates the React element from the JSX. The reconciliation takes place React sees that there is no change from the previous render and simply exits the render phase. So it's important to note here that React goes to the render phase only to discard the result. So that is the rendering behavior with respect to the use state hook. Let me summarize it so that it stays in your head for a longer duration of time. The setter function from a use state hook will cause the component to re-render. However, the exception is when you update a state hook to the same value as the current state. If you're updating to the same value after the initial render, the component will not re-render. If you're updating to the same value after re-renders, React will render that specific component one more time and then bails out from any subsequent renders. By the way, if you're wondering how the comparison is made between the previous and the current state, React uses the object.ease comparison algorithm, which you can Google for more information. I hope this video gives you an insight into the type of content you can expect in this series. In the next video, let's take a look at the reducer hook, which is similar in its behavior. I'll see you guys in the next one.